This is a demo for Magnum, the edit detector. Magnum automatically detects edits in footage. In this new version, we added CS6 support, as well as an all new detection method, and an exciting new feature, which we're calling the save detection analysis feature, which basically allows you to graphically see how Magnum sees the edits in your footage, and you can then um, set the detect level um, more accurately without any guesswork. So let's just get right into it. This is the uh, latest trailer for the Avengers movie. As you can see here, it's a 720p um, high definition clip. And um, another thing you can notice is that I've also, uh, this blue bar here means that I've right clicked and said cache work area and background. Magnum takes advantage of the new hash cache feature in CS6. So we encourage you to, to um, do the same. Everything works the way it used to where you just select your clip, your layer, and you set everything to the default. But one thing we're gonna change now is we're gonna turn on this save detection analysis option. So uh, we're also gonna just um, focus on um, a small area here. We'll go from here to, I don't know, to here. And we'll just uh, set the work area. Magnum only works in the comps work area so that you can just you know, manage where you're working. So once you've done that, we'll go ahead and hit do it. And um, notice you know, the speed at which it's working. This is a low-end MacBook Air laptop. So performance will definitely be better on a desktop workstation with faster you know, drives or drive arrays and those kinds of things. Um, however, once the detection has been done, we'll show you that it actually uh, you know, works much faster. So it says it found 12 edits, which is great. If we come and look here, we can see that it detected, um, you know, these edits uh, accurately. But um, we see this new layer here is called the Magnum Detection Analysis. If I hit the letter U to reveal the keyframes, we're going to see that there's this new detect level um, keyframes. And so if we select the, the keyframes and we look at it in the graph editor, we can see now quickly and graphically where Magnum sees the edit. So clearly where there's a spike, that's obviously an edit. And it's very simple. As you can see here, the spike here, it's, it's doing a setting of 13. That's the detect level, right? So it's very simple. Um, Magnum, if, if the detect level is higher than what you said here, it's going to set an edit. So obviously it's set to 1.7. Here it gives you 13. So it's obviously going to set an edit there. Uh, so same here. Now this one obviously is not such a large spike. So in this case, the spike is only 2.75. It's still above 1.7, but it's pretty close. So let's go over here into a little bit of a trouble area. So here, let's get back out of here. Here you can see that it set an edit here because um, this little strobe here is enough of a change that Magnum thought that that was an edit. If we look at the graph editor and we see what's going on here we can see that this is a 2.35 which is higher than 1.7 so if we wanted to have it that not be detected we just simply have to set this to above 2.35 however you also don't want to set it too high because you don't want it to ignore edits so for example here this is 6.6 .6. But um, remember at the beginning, um, this was a pretty low one, a 2.75. So um, 2.5, for example, would be a good setting here. However, let's pretend that this was lower than 2.5. With this new feature, you can actually just have it work on certain sections at a time. So if we come back out of here, we can, for example, just say, just work on this new area from here forward. So I'm just going to set the beginning of the work area. I'm going to delete all of these um, edits that it found. Just literally, like delete them. Just make sure that you extend the work. Um, sorry, the out point of the clip that you're going to want. So we're going to basically work on the latest clip here. And and so and by setting the work area, it's not going to have to go back and and reprocess the previous things. But as you will also see, um, if I go ahead and say do it, it basically knows now that there's already been a detection analysis done. And as long as there's keyframes there, it's gonna just use that information. So as you can see, that was almost in real time. And now it um, worked the way you expected it to work, which is to not set an edit during the strobe area, but it does set an edit here where there should be an edit. Um, now let's say, for example, that I wanted to keep going. So now I can say, uh, go to the end of where my last keyframe was for my detection, set the 
uh, work area out a little bit and you know again we can just have it start here again make sure that the out point you know you want to make sure that your footage is included and we're going to use a new result mode called the create detection analysis layer because uh, we're just going to basically want to continue uh, this this layer so if i have this set and i hit do it um, it tells you that it's going to overwrite so if i had had any keyframes here those keyframes are going to be overridden so that's a good thing if you, there was any changes in your footage if you're using it as a pre-comp or whatnot so let's just go ahead um, go ahead and hit yes and as you can see here, it's adding now more detection keyframes that we can now use to, um, to detect it. And again, we can just take a look at it here. And you can see that the changes are a lot more subtle here uh, because they're dissolved. So that's really going to be difficult for Magnum to, to work with. But this one here is an edit. And you can see that that one is there at 2.75. So the 2.5 setting would work. So again, we can just select the latest clip. Uh, switch it back to split into new layers and hit do it and it should just um, very quickly give you that edit there which it did so that's the new save detection analysis mode which I'm hoping is going to be very 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 useful for you guys to be able to set the detect level appropriately for your footage and the other new feature that I wanted to mention is this minimum frames between edits um, to come back again here to the strobe section uh, if the, if, if changing the detect level is not working because, for example, like your footage is full of strobing and you just know that each scene is going to be a minimum of, say, 30 frames and there should never be an edit before 30 frames, you can now set the minimum frames bef between edits and let's say you would set that to 30. So no matter what the detect level is, it will n uh, Magnum will not set an edit point unless it's been at least 30 frames since the last edit that it's set. And hopefully that's another tool that you can use to, to really kind of help Magnum uh, set the edits correctly for your footage. So this is the new version of Magnum. Hope you enjoy it. We added a couple of cool new features into Magnum version 2.6. We got a request from a VFX supervisor that uses Magnum to detect all of the cuts in their uh, shots. And, and then what they needed to do was enter all of these shots into their shot database and wanted to include a thumbnail for each shot. So in 2.6 now, there's two new result modes, save thumbnails for each cut and save thumbnails for each marker, which will save a thumbnail um, for either cuts or markers, depending on, on what method you use to uh, detect your scenes. So the other addition is, is if, you, if you hover here over the name, you'll see that there's a couple of new uh, keywords we added, um, including layer in point, layer length, but also this num, this num um, numbering thing, because currently you could only just count clips, which would just count clip one, clip two, clip three, clip four, clip five, etc. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rename the layer just Lucy here. And then instead of doing clip, I'm gonna use this new feature called num. So num lets you number from any number you would like. So for example, a, no, a common shot numbering techniques is to use padding, so OO, and then padding at the front and the back. So, so shot one is actually shot 10. And instead of incrementing one at a time, in other words, 11, 12, 13, I'm actually gonna do comma, inc. Well, first let me just show you what this does. This might show you. So I have this here. I will split it into new layers. Um, I already have my detectional analysis. So you can see here that it numbered them 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I'm going to undo now and, and then I'm going to add, and tell it this additional argument that says increase by 10. So now inc equals 10 means that when I run it again, you'll see that now it's numbered 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on. So this is a cool new keyword that gives you a little bit more flexibility about how your cuts are named, etc. So now once you have your layers named, we can now choose a new, uh, this save thumbnails for each cut. And then um, up here is a new uh, frame that says, which frame number to use for each thumbnail? So if I, if I go to the beginning here, so this would be the frame zero of the cut. And then if I were to go forward, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So for example, if I wanted to be the 10th frame of each cut, I would then change this to 10 or three or whatever. So we'll just leave it at zero for now. I just want to explain how that works. 
and then you select the frames that you want to export. Now, keep in mind that the endpoint needs to be within the work area. So if you can see here, um, the first shot, 010, is actually the endpoint is not within the work area. So I would need to um, trim this so that the work area, so that the endpoint is within the work area. So now it'll include it. And then you want to just go ahead and select the layers that you want to create thumbnails for. And then we'll go ahead and say do it. It's going to ask me where I would like to save it into. I'll just pick this folder here. And it's going to now save a thumbnail for each cut. Now, um, my comp is set at full resolution right now. So when I go and I look in the finder, we're going to see that these thumbnails are, are saved at the full resolution. They're PNGs. So you can see how they're saved here, which is great. Now, um, the thumbnails are saved at whatever the comp resolution is. So for example, if I go to quarter resolution here, they will be saved smaller. I'm also going to show you another feature while I'm here. If I create a text layer and I call this text layer slate, slate. Now I can put anything I want in the slate and I can also use the keyword. So for example, I can say shot and then I'll use the layer name for that. You can uh, use upper and lower as you wish. And then, for example, I could say the length of the cut, and then I'll just go ahead and say layer length. And now, if I wanted this value to be in frames, I would add layer length frames. But if not, it, if I just do layer length, it'll just give it to me in time. And then you can add any other information you want here, like you could add today's date, for example. Uh, it, it, you can customize this however you want. You can also use any font that you'd like for this. So for, we'll just go to regular. Um, now just keep in mind that the entire font, uh, sorry, you can only use one font style for the entire text layer. Okay, so now that I have this set up, again, I'm gonna go ahead and select all of the layers, but you have to also select the slate. Make sure you select the slate so that it knows that's the text layer you wanna use. And then again, I'll just do the same thing here. And it'll override, by the way, any existing uh, thumbnails that are there. So now if we go and take a look here, you can see now that the resolution is, is at a quarter resolution. And the you can see here now that it's in, inserted the, the layer name as well as the length for each one of these shots. And so notice how it's, it's actually doing it in time. Um, if I wanted to have done this in frames, I would have just done frames like this. Again, upper and lower doesn't really matter. And select that. Let's go ahead and do it again. So let's take a look. And now you can see that it's in um, frames, the length. Okay, now, uh, yeah, the length one is, is very long because the length of the shot is much longer. And then the final feature is if in the if in the export if in the folder that you're exporting to, you create a file called export template.txt. It needs to be exactly like this. And you go ahead and edit this. You can also put uh, keywords and whatever you want in here. So so here I can do layer name. Um, you know you could. Uh, like I said, you could do uh, any anything you want. But what's cool about this here is you can actually do uh, tabs or or commas, and then uh, and then do here the layer length frames. Uh, you know, I could do a tab. I could do, for example, the layer endpoint. And if, as we can see with the tabs, what's cool about this, so I'm going to go ahead and save that and I'm going to go ahead and close it and I'm going to re-export again. And this time, again, if you don't want to have the slate, you would just obviously just turn off the slate. And then here we go. So now we'll go ahead and export again. Now it's telling me that it detected that template and it created a new export uh, report. So now when we go here and we look at the export, you can see here that Oh, and they put the endpoint in time. You can also make that in frames, by the way. I guess that would make sense here. Frames, save. Let's, let's just export that again. Okay. So 
So now that now that's in frames. And what's cool now is because I reuse tabs, I can open this up in a um, spreadsheet program, and you can see now that it actually has put it into into its own columns, which can be very handy. So those are the new features in version 2.6 of Magnum. Hope you guys find them useful. Thanks.